You're the next contestant. It's uh no wait, that's not me either. Hey deadheads, welcome back to my channel. Or welcome for the first time, new deadheads. So today we're gonna do a review of this guy right here. This this guy in this little case, which is the Game Kitty Pixel. A few weeks ago we did an unboxing and first look. I've been using this unit for quite a while, and I've gotta say that this has become my go-to for ultimate pocketability. Now there's a lot of other handhelds that I would rather have with me for portability. The Odin 2 Pro is a fantastic handheld, but it's not going to fit in your pocket like this guy right here is going to fit in your pocket. Um, this will fit in even smaller than your pocket. So uh, we're going to do a full review of this and talk about the strengths of this, the weaknesses of this, what we liked, what we didn't like about this one, and per our usual review tactics. So Stay tuned. First, guys, continue to leave us a comment. Deadheads, I love engaging with you guys. I love the pushback. Pushback if you think I'm being silly or if I'm missing something. It's how we learn. I enjoy it. So please continue to, to conversate and build our community. We're almost to 400 deadheads. Let's see if we can get that number over by this weekend. So keep pushing. Share the content. Let your friends know about us. And also, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can know when we have new content uploaded. Anyways, let's dive in and let's talk about, you know, this guy right here and what it can do and what it can't do. And we'll show a little bit of game footage. We'll be right back, Deadheads. All right, Deadheads. So, let's talk about this guy, the Game Kitty Pixel. Now, you guys have been watching the channel are probably aware that I'm a huge fan of Leo Zhang. He is someone in the Chinese community that has really established himself as a person who is unique in his ability to come up with awesome designs. He works very closely with Game Kitty, but he also has Z Pocket Games, his own label on the side, which he's trying to grow and expand as well. And I think he actually has another business. So he's a very um, awesome entrepreneur, but he is bringing to the market lots of really cool things and ideas. So here we have the Pixel. And the first thing that I'll say about this that is just really great is the fact that this thing is very nice. It feels very premium. It has the raised edge right here around the screen to kind of help pr uh, protect it. So the recessed screen is nice. It does have a screen that is a little bit smaller than the MiU, um, not the Plus, but the MiU Mini, and it's bigger than the RG Nano. Now, I wanted to love the RG Nano, but that was just a little too small for me. This hits at just the right size for me. Um, the buttons are nice. They're really nice and solid. Um, the D-pad is really good. And it does have the four buttons on the top, which was something that a little surprised me since the Nano only had the two. Um, you got your volume rocker over here. You've got your SD card. I love the texture back here. I just, I just love holding onto this thing. It just, it just feels so good. And again, you can just drop this thing in a pocket, no problem at all. I like the color. Now, one of the things that um, they did, the Game Kitty did, was release this in four different colorways, with one of them being super rare, the purple. Um, it is going for a crazy stupid price, but you can get this in the, the ash or gray, which is labeled black, the red, the blue, the green, or the purple. I'm sorry, five colorways. There was also a white one that was sent out to 40 different individuals that is even rarer. So this, you know, when this pre-ordered, if you wanted to get the purple, you had to order all four of the regular ones that get the purple one. So pretty rare with that thing, but it's got such a great industrial design. It's a nice size. It feels solid. It feels like it's going to last. But right now, the biggest problem with this is that this guy is being charged way too much. I'm in the Discord, I've seen Leo Zhang and what he's posted, and he is trying to get this thing out into the market at a much more reasonable price. This thing should be on AliExpress somewhere between $60 to $70. So the last message I saw from him, he is trying to get this on AliExpress next month, um, hitting that $60 to $70 price range. Right now, you can find it on AliExpress for around $90, maybe $80 something. Um, which is just a little too much for this, but this is a great, great device. Um, again, 
nice buttons on the side. You can tell it's well made. Game Kitty has certainly come along. I like the lanyard hole there, uh, the USB-C. I love the way they designed this with the see-through for the charging. So you can see as it's charging and when it's full. And you have your function button and your power button here. And we'll go ahead and turn this on just to show you for you guys that didn't see the unboxing. And here we are booting up our Pixel. Now I was able to get this uh, already in English, um, but if you got it you know, shipped to you in um, Chinese, it's not that hard to change over. Now, let's talk about some things that are not so great about this. One, it's limited to PlayStation 1. That's not really that big a problem because with the size of this, you're not gonna have sticks and you're not really gonna be able to take advantage of games that would use analog anyway. So I think that's a compromise that's just perfectly fine. Um, second of all, this is using an older Ingenic MIPS based chip, which is the 1830. It's been used in a lot of devices in the past. It's a pretty solid device. That being said, there is, you know, a Linux based sort of custom firmware on here and I don't know how much support this is going to get. It's not open source so there's not a way to do custom firmware for this. That's a negative. I wish they would open it up or I wish someone would be able to get that chipset to do some custom firmware. If there's some out there and I'm not aware about it, please please let us know deadheads. Um, that being said, it's also not that easy to load other emulators on this. There's ways to do it. And there's also just the fact that, you know, the emulators that are on here are quite different than what you may be used to using um, whenever you're playing on an Android or Linux based one. Um, some of them are pretty common as we load up Pokemon here. And just listen to that. It's got great sound as well. Um, another bonus to this is it's a really good one hand. So if you want to play something that's one-handed and doesn't really have to take a lot of effort, then um, this is going to be a good one for that. Um, the other negative is this thing, although it uses USB-C, it doesn't have those extra pins and it's not going to do USB-C to C. In fact, I had a problem getting this thing to charge. That is a negative of this. I did let it um, charge all the way down. And then it gave me a little trouble getting it back up to boot. So again, I don't know why the design was that. I'm not sure why they couldn't put in the full C to C here, but it's going to need you to use the old fashioned A to C connection uh, there. Otherwise you'll run into some issues. Um, but you can see it's got a pretty good screen. I think it's IPS. It looks like it. I mean, there's not much glare going to the side uh, and it looks to hold up pretty much as you switch planes here for in-plane switching so you can pretty much still see it at different angles uh, for it but we'll just play a little game footage here i'm gonna pause and fast forward and get into the game and all right so again playing some pokemon fire red here and you can see it looks really good this is 320 by 240 i think is the aspect ratio um and it is, it's, it's quite, quite nice looking. Now there are better ways to play Game Boy Advance. Uh, but again, this thing is just, you can put it in your pocket. You can put it on a lanyard and have it connected to your keychain. Um, so this thing can be with you. It did get pretty good battery. Um, the battery lasted pretty well for me. So I was pretty pleased with that. Didn't have any issue with that. Um, I think I got straight playing on this about four to five hours before it went down. It has the nice indicator here so you can know when it's going to, you know, how many bars you have left, 100%, 75, 50, 25, etc. So I like that. You got, you know, your menus for each one. This is using GPSP for the emulator. So you can go in here and you can do different settings. So again, it's, it's got pretty much from the go the ability to just pick up and play. You don't have to do a lot of settings or tinkering with this unless it comes in Chinese and you got to get set to English. Um, but really, it's just, it's really good. So let's take a break here and come back and let's show you what the uh, PlayStation looks like since that's the top of the uh, line that it can play. We'll be right back, Deadheads. We're back as it boots up into PlayStation with the BIOS. I'm going to do a little bit of Castlevania here because who doesn't love Castlevania? Symphony of the Night. 
So again, this is about the top. It can do some arcade, open bore, um, but really for your consoles, this is going to be kind of where it tops out. And so um, we'll get the game going here. Let me just fast forward and we'll... Final battle. I always like how the Symphony of the Night starts like this. But you can see this is just big enough. Uh, again, the Nano from Embernet just wasn't big enough for me. But this guy, I can pull it out and, you know, I can just be jamming like it's 1997 again, playing some Symphony of the Night. So it's really cool. Um, Monster, you don't sounds great. This world. It was not by my hand. I remember this is one of the first games that had some of the best voice acting. I was so impressed with it. Who is to pay me tribute? Tribute? You yes, you could bring out the me you. You could bust out your RG35XXH, you know, or the R36S or even the R33. But this thing, man, it just, it just feels just, just so great. I just really love the build quality of this. Buying this, you know that this is going to hold up to drops. Just kidding. But it will hold up to drops. It's going to hold up to a lot more wear and tear than your um, plastic shells are. And, of course, you know, it just looks great. All right, Deadhead. So we'll be right back, and I'm just going to do a little summary of the things I liked and the things I didn't like. And we'll wrap up this. Uh, all right, Deadhead. So let's start with things I did not like about this. So the first thing that I did not like about this is the fact that, again, this needs to have a USB-B end to charge it. It's not going to work with USB-C to C. I don't really understand in 2024 why this continues to show up. I think that most people now have access to USB-C to C. So again, I would have preferred that that was something. It's just kind of irritating that it didn't do it. The next thing that really I wish was done differently is there's no internal storage, okay? So this guy is running off the SD card. Not a big problem, but it would have been nice if this guy had any kind of internal storage that might be due to the size, maybe to keep the size small. And that's a trade-off I guess I'd be willing to, to make if that was the case. Um, but you don't have any internal storage, so you're, you're stuck. No um, ability or custom firmware. You pretty much have to go with what, what those guys have given you. Um, the other thing that I didn't like so much about this is the price. Again, they're trying to get this more over in the overseas market. Um, right now, this is just not where it needs to be. AliExpress next month will hopefully have official sellers right now what you're seeing are resellers who are marking up everything the company wanted this to be between 60 to 70 i do believe in china you can get it for somewhere around that from not a reseller so hopefully in march we'll see the price of that okay so that's out of the way what do i like about this well there's a lot that i like about this number one the size i think that the size of this is a really good size. I think it's very pocketable. Um, it, I find myself picking up and playing. The screen is just big enough. Maybe if it was a little tad bigger, I might like it a little bit more, but I think this is big enough. It's clear enough. The PPI is good enough to where I can see it. Um, I like the industrial design. The, the buttons work well. It maneuvers well. Uh, everything feels nice and clicky and premium. It's, it's got a good size to it. The layout is good. I love the little industrial touches here. Um, I love the design of this thing. It's just nice and premium. It looks great. It feels great. It's great to hold and play. Um, I also actually like this software. Now, this is one where I think a lot of people may differ, um, but you do have some applications. And one of the really cool ones here that I really like is this ability to play music. So... Let's listen here real quick. This came with a couple of songs. So you could load this up with some MP3s and yeah, have your little media player here. 
um, and, and play some music with you along with your gaming. I think that's just a really nice touch. This, in fact, for someone that maybe was less interested in gaming, this could be a nice little keychain addition to have music with you. And it, and it sounds really good. Um, it did come with these two songs. That just, that just sounds great. Let me put it up next to the mic. So, that's really cool. I wish, you know, there's a little equalizer here. Now this is in, in Chinese. But it would be nice. Um, I don't know if apps are going to continue to be developed. It looks like there's a little player here so you can play some video. I didn't really have any video to play and I didn't load any on it um, for it. Yeah, simple media player. Um, and so, well, let's see what it's going to do here. I actually didn't do this. So that's another good thing. But it does have some built-in apps. This is version 2.0. Hopefully they'll continue to develop this OS. I know there are English versions that are available out there in the wild. You got your file manager input tester, um, and just little applications. You got your settings, but you also have your emulators as well as some built-in games. That's the other thing I like. This had some surprising games. I played the Sonic game that was on here, but this has some nice little ported games in here. Um, Doom is really cool. So this is just awesome. This little guy has Doom. Um, you know, 1997 me is just screaming that I can walk around and play Doom and Symphony of the Night just <laughs> and a little handheld that fits in my pocket. So this is just really cool. So there's a lot of favorable things here as we take this video out. Um, Deadheads, this is a buy. I recommend this, but I would recommend waiting until we get it in AliExpress and possibly on Amazon where you can actually have a better return service. I am trying to see if Leo Zhang has any plans or Game Kitty has any plans to get this out to Amazon officially um, but I really think they should um, but this is just a really cool device that, that I like quite a bit okay guys that does it for our review of the Game Kitty Pixel again I find myself picking this up and playing this a lot more than I expected uh, I do recommend this device I think it's great but again um, wait until this comes into the wider market um, you know, unless you want to pay $20, $30 more um, to get it sooner, like me. I always have that, you know, early buyer um, disease where I got to get things quick. Anyways, Deadheads, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Remember, try to share this video. Try to share our community and let's grow this thing. And we'll see you next time, Deadheads. Dead Fred out.